All right, guys, and welcome back. Today, we are checking out another SCP group of interest. Today, we are learning about Marshall, Carter, and Dark LTD. I have no clue what these guys are. Um, with the other groups of interest, I had at least a vague idea um, from the other SCP videos. I was kind of able to absorb a little bit of information and be like, okay, the GOC is kind of like the flip side of the coin to the foundation. Um, the Serpent's Hand, I, yeah, they're a little bit more underhanded. I know nothing about Marshall, Carter, and Dark. If someone were to come to me and say, what is Marshall, Carter, and Dark? I would say that sounds like a law firm. Some kind of personal injury attorneys or something, you know? Uh, have you been injured on the job by an SCP? Give Marshall, Carter, and, uh, and Dark a call. Attorneys at law. We specialize in SCP-related personal injury and death. That is what comes to mind when I hear this. So, uh, let's figure out what it is, because I have no clue. Marshall, Carter, and Dark limited. If you've been following this series up to this point, you've learned about a number of different groups and organizations within the SCP universe. There's the SCP Foundation itself, of course, and their goal of containing and researching the anomalous in order to protect the Contain status it. quo. There's the Global Occult Coalition, who share similar goals to the Foundation, but care less about containing anomalies if they threaten the safety of mankind. There's also the Church of the Broken God and the Sarkic Cults, who blend... As far as the uh, Sarkic Cults, Church of the Broken God, we will get to them, eventually. ...the Anomalous with religion as part of a vast war for the sake of the planet. But now we get to Marshall, Carter, and Dark, who utilize anomalies not for altruism, or some grand goal, but simply for profit. Much like anything perceived to be rare and valuable, there are those who would profiteer off of it, and anomalies are no different. M, C, and D have been involved in a large number of anomalous objects known to the Foundation, so this video will go over their basic history and some of the notable examples. Oh boy. Marshall Carter and Dark is going to be a bunch of rich people, isn't it? Bunch of bunch of rich people using SCPs to get richer. So, a big question might be who exactly are Marshall Carter and Dark, the good individuals question. who presumably founded the organization. Once again, the lack of canon rears its head, and the three individuals are hardly public figures, so it's not an easy question to answer. The Wills and Ways series of tales presents them as Amos Marshall, Ruprecht Carter, and Percival Dark, and they have extended their lives anomalously by decades at least. It's occasionally referenced in a few tales and articles that Dark is the true founder of the organization, and is far older and more mysterious than the other two, although again, this is not necessarily true. SCP-2463, and the accompanying documentation, discuss six small bronze horse statuettes that have the capability of converting any water from a natural source into petroleum. These statuettes apparently originate from the 3rd century, when Roman Emperor Valerian, while captured by the Persians, contacted an individual known as D. Mercator, implied to be dark and asked for something that would utterly destroy his enemies. D. Mercator contacted one of his sources, who supplied the six statuettes, but Valerian died before he could utilize them. Mercator wrote a letter to Valerian's son, the current emperor, informing him of his father's business deal, and telling him that the statuettes will be held by Mercator's organization unless he could pay a sum of 60 million gold coins. An exorbitant amount. That's a ton of money. The documentation shows that this amount was never paid, and so the statuettes were sold and repurchased a number of times to different individuals, 
such as one of the founders of Baghdad, before being eventually confiscated by the SCP Foundation. So, the statues, the bronze statues of the horses are anomalous artifacts that can turn water into oil, basically. Right? So, okay. Okay, yeah. I can see how you could, I mean, with an anomaly like that, you're basically printing your own money at that point. I mean, I, yeah, okay. All right. Uh, if they can just make anomalous items that basically make them money like that, jeez. Regardless of how Marshall, Carter, and Dark came together, they've certainly been doing this for some time now, and they've managed to keep their identities and operations pretty secretive. But what are their operations? As 2463 showcased, MC and D buy, find, or otherwise acquire certain strange and unusual objects, mainly those that the SCP Foundation would classify as safe, and then proceed to sell them, okay. often at auctions to the highest bidders. They don't especially care too much about who they sell these objects to, as long as they're rich and powerful, although there are certain exceptions to who they'll sell to. The documentation for 2463 shows MC&D bidding on one of their own items to prevent the Mana Charitable Foundation from purchasing it, as they likely wanted to take it out of circulation. The MCF is an organization that uses anomalies to try and benefit the world. The Serpent's Hand present a much larger threat to their operations, however, a group devoted to spreading awareness of the anomalous and taking down the veil of secrecy. Although organizations such as the Foundation and the GOC are opposed to MC&D's operations, they can't quite compete with their level of economic power. Yeah, man. Uh, I know in another video, I think it was the GOC video, where I was uh, talking about resources. And I said that the GOC has got to have more resources than most of these other groups. Uh, I said that they, they've got to have more resources than, than the foundation. Um, and one of the viewers pointed out to me that, you know, the foundation has lots of ways of making money, whether through legitimate means, illegitimate means, front companies, um, using SCPs for profit, things like that. Now, if you're talking about there's SCPs out there, like the Bronze Horses, which can literally turn water into usable oil, petroleum product, then, yeah, dude, you're printing your own money at that point. I mean, if there's, I mean, there clearly is other uh, anomalous artifacts out there that you can make money off of. So, yeah, man, like it wouldn't... It, Honestly, it wouldn't surprise me if they had an anomaly out there that was called, like, the Touch of Midas or something, and you could just turn things to gold or something along those lines. So, and if Marshall, Carter, and Dark specialize in dealing with basically only these kinds of artifacts and selling these kinds of artifacts for a very high price, repeatedly, no less... Yeah, um, I guess they would. But again, they haven't gone too far into who Marshall Carter in Dark is, but it seems like they're the top of the pyramid when it comes to this particular organization. Even so, this particular organization is essentially made up of the extremely wealthy. Even the people they sell to are all like one percenters. And ultimately, there are better ways for them to spend their time and efforts. Although MC&D possess a vast amount of wealth and control, and could easily plunge the world into thermonuclear war, they choose to use this power to simply gain more wealth. Yeah. Thermonuclear war is bad for business. It's said that around 100 people specifically work for MC&D at any given time, running a highly efficient operation. Wow. 
a hundred people, that's tiny in comparison to the other groups of interest. Even the serpent's hand, which is essentially just multiple versions of the same person, still has a larger structure than uh, a larger organization than Marshall Carter and Dark. So they're a very, very concentrated. Um, it's very concentrated power and wealth with these guys. But they will occasionally outsource some work to other organizations if necessary. They acquire their products through various means, primarily from purchasing items directly from anomalous creators, such as Dr. Wondertainment and The Factory. They will also trade with- Dr. Wondertainment. Look at this guy. Okay, all right, all right. You guys already know. You guys already know I got questions about this guy, but we'll, we'll, we'll get to that. The Prometheus Labs and obtain art exhibits from Are We Cool Yet? They then sell these items. Are We Cool Yet? Also something I'm gonna take a look at in the future. Across the world. And they claim the Chaos Insurgency is one of their biggest clients, a group that uses anomalies for personal benefit, often weaponizing them. Let's discuss some of the interactions that MC and D have had with the SCP Foundation to give you perhaps a better idea about the group. Although, <clears> keeping <throat> in mind, these documents are written from the Foundation's perspective. Okay. As mentioned, most of the items that MC and D deal with are considered safe by the Foundation. Right. But that does not mean they're harmless, and the group generally cares little for ethical concerns. Yeah, safe by, by foundation standards doesn't mean that it can't kill you. Safe by foundation standards just means that it's easy to lock up. It's easy to contain. Um, if I recall correctly, uh, I think their whole classification system for the SCP Foundation is not really based on how dangerous it is to, to, uh, to a person. Like, almost everything in the Foundation can kill you. If, if being lethal was what determined your classification, then everything in the building would be the highest designation. But if I recall correctly, their, their classifications are based on how easy it is and how much resources it takes to contain something. Concerns. SCP-604 the Cannibal's Banquet, is one of the more grotesque examples. Cannibal's this SCP Banquet? This is a set of tableware, dishes, and glasses that when an edible substance, primarily animal matter, is placed on or in them, turns into human flesh or bodily fluids. Why? Why would that be a thing? Who would even make that? Uh, a cannibal, I guess, but... What? The transformation will be the closest approximation between the two. So fleshy steaks will become cuts from a human thigh, and red wine will turn into human blood. These transformations are limited to the size of the dish, so most pieces will transform into an infantile equivalent, such as chicken wings becoming tiny burnt infant arms. Uh! Placing items vertically on the dishes does allow for larger growths such as placing a snake upright on a dish and it turning into a human throat and mouth. Marshall, Carter, and Dark acquired the item from a secluded monastery that was using it to practice the rites of communion, believing it to be the body- Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. No. Just take communion wafers, guys. Body and blood You'll be fine. Jesus Christ. After MC and D acquired it, they began using it as an exhibit in a restaurant, offering it to certain members as a chance to safely test the waters of cannibalism. Man. I mean... There's always going to be people who want to try anything. There's 7 billion people on this planet, okay? Somebody wants to eat people. 
And I suppose if there's a way to do it without actually killing a human being, I guess this is actually a net positive for the world. You know, if cannibals can satiate their insanity without actually having to kill real live human beings, maybe this is a net positive for Another trait of SCP-604 is that if any still living material is placed on its surface, it will transform into a moving human body part. Oh! Such as a starfish turning into a six-fingered baby's hand. What? To flex its fingers. This phenomenon what? was highly desired by MC&D's clients, and so kittens, puppies, and small monkeys were often used, with continued efforts on their part to create a human head capable of intelligent speech. No! Another example of their morals, or lack thereof, is SCP-1660, Unearthly Forest. 1660 is a relatively small, parallel universe, accessible only by lighting a special decorative lamp and stepping through a gate the smoke produces. Huh. The universe seems to consist of a large forest, surrounded by an extremely durable wall around and below it, and the sky above it seems to contain a layer of highly dangerous gases. The forest is filled with different flora and fauna, some familiar to our world, such as brown bears and deer, and other things unique to 1660, such as cougar-like creatures capable of echolocation, and some sort of bioluminescent armored cross between a reptile and a mammal, two meters in length. These creatures possess forepaws jointed like human hands and are also sapient, having created simple tools, fire, and their own language. Their cave paintings seem to show images of them being hunted by humans, and then another set of humans that saved them. Where hmm, okay, because I was going to say, are they hostile? And then they said, well, they were hunted by humans, and I was like, well, I guess they are hostile. And they said they were saved by humans. So are they hostile? Wearing the SCP Foundation symbol. It seems that MC&D was using 1660 as a hunting grounds for clients. And now the sapient creatures worship the Foundation as their saviors. Oh, man. Uh, okay, so Marshall Carter and Dark are basically using these anomalies to satiate the need... Or the the desires of the extremely wealthy doing all the wild stuff that these people have done in in real life history that includes you know big game hunting of rare and exotic animals um dude the hunting of humans the eating of humans um all this stuff that's you know considered taboo by society these rich people are like yeah i can get away with it because i'm rich and it seems like marshall carter and dark caters to those people and caters to those needs oh man this is a whole different side to the scp universe mc and d aren't always morally bankrupt madmen focused solely on profit however as SCP-2501 shows. Okay. 2501, the Claw, is a large mechanical gauntlet seemingly created by Russians prior to the 1960s, and its functions are permanently turned on, with no way to alter or disable them. When an individual wears the gauntlet, they are capable of exerting immense pressure on any object within sight, simply by holding the gauntlet in front of them and squeezing the claw so that the object is between it. This pressure is capable of crushing a soup can from a meter away, flattening a tank from 200 meters away. Oh. Oh. At first I was like, well, that's not very impressive. It's just a, it's the claw that crushes things. But no, it can remotely crush them from a distance. That's, uh, that could be dangerous and potentially even crushing asteroids or planets. Whoa! Wait, so how does it work? Is it... 
Is it like when you when you stick uh, your hand up and and does anybody remember that? Does anybody remember that where you're like, where is it? Where they're like, I'm squishing your head, squishing your head, I'm squishing your head. Is that what it's like? They just put it up and then they squeeze and they can crush anything. Yeah, you like your head in a vice? Well, I'm crushing. How MC&D acquired this item is unknown, and they apparently sold or lended it to a few clients before deciding it was simply too dangerous. Rather than risking a wealthy individual try to flatten the sun... <laughs> so it is like that. <laughs> they shipped it off to the SCP Foundation for safekeeping. Although there isn't much love between the two groups, they acknowledge that the Foundation are simply better at keeping dangerous things safe and contained. Okay, okay, so they're not... They're not so reckless as to put something out into the world that can destroy their own business, essentially. Which is why, you know, like earlier I said, yeah, okay, they can start a thermonuclear war, but that is not good for business. Having SCPs out there that could do things on a global catastrophic level is not good for Marshall, Carter, and Dark because it puts their business at risk. Okay, okay. It's not that they're not morally corrupt because they absolutely are. It's that they're not dumb enough to endanger their own business and investments. That's what it is. SCP-2776 is another interesting example of the potential power that MC&D can wield, and their capabilities of affecting history. 2776 is essentially a lifelike automaton resembling George Washington. Okay. This robot contains some prosthetic features available in the 1700s, such as glass eyes and false dentures, but also possesses some highly advanced features, such as armored plating, and a small fusion reactor. Letters recovered. That took a huge jump. You're like, oh, it could have some modern things, you know, like armor plating and a micro fusion reactor. Okay. Glass eyes, metal plating, wooden teeth, and a micro fusion reactor. Yeah, one of those things is not like the others. Reveal that MCD created 2776 using the corpse of George Washington. Who died while still an officer in the French and Indian War. Apparently, the colonists needed both an inspirational leader as well as more firepower, and so MCD supplied both with 2776. One of their employees, named Martha, was assigned to maintain the automaton, and he was given an estate away from prying eyes to avoid people discovering his. So, you're telling me George Washington died? during the revolution and Marshall Carter in dark replaced him with an automaton and his caretaker was Martha Washington. Okay. All right. That means that they've altered history in the SCP universe. And that also means Marshall Carter in dark has been around since at least the revolutionary war. How old is this group? His true nature. After winning the Revolutionary War, 2776 was put into a standby mode until he was recovered in 2007 by the SCP Foundation. 2776 was not aware of his mechanical nature and eventually broke containment after watching a television program describing a buyout of an American company by a British company. His core began emitting massive amounts of gamma radiation and he killed everyone in his path as he moved towards London, until he was recontained. It's hard to look at Marshall, Carter, and Dark and see them as anything close to good, but it is easy to see them as realistic, at least as yeah. far as an SCP universe is concerned. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. 100%. There's without a doubt, if these anomalous um, items existed... People would 100% try to make money off. And somebody, somebody would be incredibly successful at it. Somebody would end up making something like Marshall Carter and Dirk. 100%. Yeah. 
out of all the groups that exist in this universe, this might be the most realistic one, unfortunately. Concerned. Merchants <clears throat> taking the rare and valuable and finding a profit with them have existed for thousands of years, and it makes sense that anomalies would be no different. While the SCP Foundation and the GOC will continue to raid MC&D facilities and reclaim objects, they don't make a grand effort to wipe them out, either. Perhaps this is because of instances like SCP-2501, where they know that there are worse groups for anomalies to end up with, and hope MC&D still bring the really dangerous items to them. Or perhaps they realize that going to war with MC&D would be a lot like poking a bear with a stick, and cause quite a bit of trouble for both. <clears throat> yeah, I think... Uh... I think messing with Marshall, Carter, and Dark is not a wise decision based solely on the resources available. Um, yeah, man, these guys can essentially print money. And um, you got to remember, man, not everybody is loyal and not everybody is ethical, which means there's a vast, vast amount of the population who could be purchased. Um, I can easily see them being able to buy, you know, moles or get people to defect or sabotage other groups from the inside. The only group that I think that they wouldn't be able to sabotage is probably the Serpent's Hand. And that's only because they're all a variation on the same person and they all essentially have the same goals and ideals and values and because of that either you're not going to be able to buy the loyalty of any of them or you could buy the loyalty of all of them and since that hasn't happened i think you can't do it but every other group would be highly susceptible to being, uh, you know, people would turn traitor for a big fat paycheck. Absolutely. Um, people do it all the time in real life. They've done it historically. Yeah. And with that kind of money and power and influence, there's no doubt that they have massive influence and massive ties to important people. I mean, think about it. If the top of the top, the 1%, the, the billionaires and politicians go to Marshall Carter in dark so that they can fulfill their dark, you know, desires or fantasies, then yeah, dude, they're going to defend Marshall Carter in dark at every turn, whether it's through paperwork or gunfire. I mean, yeah, you don't want to mess with these guys. I mean, money, money speaks, dude. I mean, the realest song you'll ever hear in your life is Cream by Wu-Tang Clan, and that's Cash Moves Everything Around Me. Both sides. Either way, MC and D have dealt with the rich and powerful for a very long time, amassing quite a fortune. And as they say, money makes the world go round. Or Cash Moves Everything Around Me. Get the money. Dollar dollar bill, y'all. So that was Marshall, Carter, and Dark. Uh, pretty sure that's the answer, right? Let's see. <clears throat> okay. All right. Yeah. That's solid. That makes sense. Uh, yeah, guys, Marshall, Carter, and Dark. Um, very interesting, actually. I do like that they are so much different than all the other group. Um, you know, they're, 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 it's very interesting. They're very interesting. These guys are almost like an Illuminati, right? Like they're more secret society feeling than any of the other group. They're so different. They're, you know, they're playing the game on a different level than everybody else, it seems. And I think this quote is a great kind of encapsulation of their whole thing, you know? 
Um, they've got the whole world under their thumb with their money, their connections, their resources. Yeah. You know, I would bet that even when they lose, they're still winning. They're still making a profit. You know, they're, they're probably playing, even the people they sell stuff to, they're probably playing them into one of their greater overarching schemes of things. So yeah, these guys are very interesting. These are the secret society, the skull club, the Illuminati of the SCP world with, you know, probably fingers in everybody's pies. So very interesting. And uh, yeah, this was a fun video to do. I like that they're different and uh, I hope you guys liked the video. If you guys did and you wanna see more similar content about the SCP universe, go ahead and like and subscribe to stay current with the videos. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what your favorite SCP is. Let me know what you want me to take a look at next. We've got a list kind of going right now. Um, I think we've covered most of the major groups. So from here on out, we'll probably uh, alternate. We'll do an SCP, then a group, then an SCP, then a group. So we get through all of them. But yeah, guys, um, thanks for stopping by. Until next time, take care of yourselves. As always, have a great day.